Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Director Watch, an awards watch podcast that attempts to get inside the mind of cinema's greatest auteurs, explore what drives them, and maybe we go on a few unrelated tangents along the way. I'm Ryan McQuay, the executive editor here at Awards Watch, and joining me as always is my co host and co counsel, Jay Ledbetter. And let me ask you, Ryan. So I've been making it a bit over the last few episodes for me to like name the wrong movie for Mm -hmm. what we're talking about i'm like oh this is a similar movie and this is the movie we're covering is that a good bit (laughs) are you just like this is what you want to start the show off with no i mean i need to figure it out because if it's not this will be the end of it but i i'm I'm just wondering is it is it like a fun way to start the show or is it stupid i think think it's like a i think it's one you do every now and then but maybe not like every you think well see i i think it's an all or nothing type of thing no, I think like every now and then, if like one is similar to okay. something else, then I think you could do it. Well, there's like, six thousand movies that are similar to this. I know, but like you know, maybe not every episode. You gotta keep it fresh. Maybe See, come I think up like, with, like 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 maybe the you fun interchange one, some bits. You know what I mean? Like doing the like boat trip for cruising. That was a fun one. Right? That was like that yeah. was good. Yeah, yeah that was. Um, good. I think it helps when we have guests. Well, you know, that's an interesting point. Is it? If someone doesn't know the temperature of the show, is that awkward? Yeah. That's and, and we'll cross that bridge some other time. But uh, that's that's a good question. <laughs> I like how we got anyway. Really... We're covering uh, the Kane Mutiny Court Martial today. <laughs> William Friedkin's final film, his that posthumous was actually, film. That's actually better than anything you could have done to start off this show. You silly son of a bitch! God damn it. Yeah, this and this is sadly the end of the William freaking movie series. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, and as much as I'm excited to talk about this movie, which is a movie I like, uh, I'm excited to talk about kind of reflecting on I'm freaking the freaking series, which has been I, our longest series yet. Yes, I will also say just up front too how I know that, and I know that this this is not to make a joke or or anything of it. When I was when I was putting my list together, and Jay's got his list, and we'll do our final rankings in this episode too for 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 the freaking series of films we covered are just films that we've seen in general. Um, and Jay's seen them all, and I pretty much have I've seen a dozen of them, which is pretty good. Um, I was really sad because um, one that the series is ending, but two, the prospect of doing modern directors is the idea of us being able to cover their next film now we will have a may december episode and we will have and we have already done a dune part two episode that has released um and so but the idea of of like and there will be a pta you know one off when he makes his new movie and everything and it comes out and same for Lynn Ramsey and, and everybody. This, but this we is the first. Our, yeah, we got to do our May December up. But this is this is the first time where Jay we had a modern director, and obviously the idea of this is to pay homage to to William Freakin. But knowing that we're just a year, not even a year, separated from his passing, and then you watch a movie like we're going to watch today, and you go, God damn it we really lost somebody who still had so much juice left in the tank. It felt like, yeah. And so, and that's, and, and to me, as, as I was rewatching the film today, not to jump ahead too far ahead, I just, I was, I was like, God damn it. What a way to go, but out and on your own terms, but I miss him. I miss him already. I, I miss him too. And as I've been watching, you know, these last few films, you watch this, you watch Killer Joe, you watch Bug, you watch 12 Angry Men, all of which I think are good movies. But you do th- think back and just be like, this is the guy that made Sorcerer. This is the guy that made The Exorcist. How did he not get another shot to do something on a little bit of a grander scale? It's a he, he's a really interesting figure in the history of cinema and i i watch this movie i like this movie i i actually think this is one of the better examples of one of these types of movies in recent years but i am still just like i wish he got to make like some practical thriller more than you know the, he got to do the hunted um 
not too terribly long ago, but it, it's still just like he was so good at that. He could have kept doing that. And nobody let him. It's it's an interesting arc. I had to tell you, I think this movie that we're talking about today is really goddamn good. I think it's really good. It's really yeah. good. This is well, we were and this is our most recent film i think that we've talked about outside of well dune i guess dune part two we talked about that a couple of weeks ago and released that episode so that's the most recent one but of in within contained within a movie series mm -hmm. this is this literally came out last year was that oh, for sure i mean, I this mean came at out Venice. not too long ago yeah and um and yeah it's um it's a remake it's a and in but in a lot of ways but in a lot of ways it's also its own thing too like which i find interesting so i mean let me set this up here it's a the k mutiny court martial and, and obviously it stars Kiefer sutherland and jason clark and uh jake lacy and it and it's directed and adapted by william freakin in the final film and re was released posthumously um the movie follows uh, a naval officer who stands trial for mutiny after taking command from a ship captain who felt or who he felt was in an unstable way putting both the ship and the crew in danger and essentially what this is is it is the the court case to clear his name and it, this is about the lawyer who is who is representing him played by jason clark um jay a little bit of an interesting release uh and way to watch this movie because this movie never came out in theaters this was a straight to uh, a Showtime streaming, special, a Showtime special, which I've got to say. When the deal was made at Venice and this became a Showtime acquisition straight to TV movie, I felt uh, really even more sad at the idea that the last movie ever made by a great director went straight to a fucking streaming platform that nobody fucking yeah. knows how to get to and that it doesn't even get to be in a theater like it's and it wasn't i know it's not the most cinematic movie of all time there, there's something kind of beautiful about his last movie in particular going yeah. <laughs> like that the like it's completely out of his hands and they're like table. well just just put it yeah. on just put it on tv and but you know whatever. i mean 12 angry men went straight to showtime no, that's as true. well right so that there is a history there in like you said this is well that was a tv movie that's de no, specifically I, I, designed I, I, for I know TV. i know this but is how, how much money you think this is going to make at the box office right it's, yeah but like but like okay Mo but like i mean this is the, the theatrical versus uh streaming sure Crusade, right I mean, so you the get battle. yeah but like if a streamer buys it it doesn't fucking matter how much money it makes at the box office they're buying it for the content purposes and the brand of whoever's directing it or starring in it they're not they're not trying to make money off of it like you look at fucking apple they don't give a shit that killers of the flower moon was technically a box office bomb and they didn't make any they make their money back they don't care it's about having the content on their platform and they can afford to make those types of gambles because they're because Apple TV Plus is yeah. a third tier uh, revenue stream for that company yeah, because they're their I, off of iPhones, iPhones and computers are the thing that that gets them through the door. And, uh, what mm -hmm. Apple Vision Plus? Is that what it's yeah, called? like when they drop like two hundred million dollars to Martin Scorsese, it is like it is half a drop, in, a the drop in the bucket but this wasn't picked up this was produced no. by showtime correct this wasn't picked up no it was picked up i thought i think let me look was it up. was it produced by showtime because it felt like it was picked up this was produced by showtime and networks this when? was a straight to video straight to streaming thing from the from the bottom up uh and 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 you can kind of feel that a little bit but that said this is a little bit of a pressure cooker, right? This thing is good. God, this thing rules. Man. It, it's 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 really good, and it's got some people who, well, it you was know, you might not expect it, to be. It was okay. produced by Paramount Global, but yeah, yeah, essentially like Paramount had this, and then yeah, then they just. I 
my impression is that it was always meant to be a yeah it feels like a i'm paramount plus yeah movie fuck it sucks though um it, it just does i'm sorry any more thoughts you want to unleash on that Let's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah i I'm think paramount plus fucking here. blows i think like paramount plus is one of the worst fucking apps that we have out there it's right up there with peacock like they're both yeah are those are the two worst their, right who are now threatening to combine together they're combining and then they're also going to have like the nfl like go fuck yourselves like who gives a shit like they wow. are not i didn't feel strongly about this let's listen. power rank power rank, rank the streamers okay Who's the best streamer well just okay this is a this is a good question to ask it is actually an interesting question no i no, but i want to ask you a question Mm -hmm. does is it are you talking specifically about the streamer content are you talking about the app or are you talking about the availability to go and mm. also purchase and rent movies as well uh no not not the last part i'm okay. not talking okay. about purchase I'm, I'm talking about content content and user experience those are the two things that i'm okay. considering then i think netflix is number one mm -hmm. because they they're the most reliable app they are. They've got it down look, to a freaking science. They're they've got they've they everyone's chasing them. They've got really good movies. They got very good series across mm -hmm. the board, different types of things that you want. They've got foreign movies. Their only problem is their only problem is they don't have more movies pre nineteen eighties. And the problem is their library is shrinking. That's yeah, they're shrinking. Thing. But they're creating a lot of great movies. And they usually, are. They, they make good movies. Usually, I mean, they make a lot of schlock, too. No, they do. They um, make a lot of garbage, but they're making but, Jane Campion movies. Yeah, they're right? making uh, Spike Lee joints. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they're they're in it to win it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They made May December. We'll see if that continues, but that has been their history. Maybe they limit to, like, one or two of those a year, but they're they're still buying a shit they ton of crap. They still want to win that Oscar, man. They, they, they want to win that Oscar. They want it so bad. Um, controversial pick for number two, okay, is uh, I'm going to go Max. Okay. Max because, and here's why, Max has, TCM. I think, bingo. And they and their ability to be able to have a lot of choices and variety. And they got Miyazaki. They got Miyazaki. They've got they they've got anime. They've got they got a lot of great stuff. S similar lines, um, I think uh, Hulu, because you can get your TV there. You can get your you can get good movies because they've got a lot of the streamlined stuff for Searchlight. They you know they they've got a pretty uh, easy system to get to. And um, Apple's probably fourth. The worst is Amazon, and they have no business. Amazon's UI is they unbelievable. Have, they have their library is actually decent, but they their have UI really, is no, they out have, of control. Bad. They have great content. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna say this again. They have great content, but their app is uh, their their when you because I I watch everything on my PS5, and then I mm -hmm. and then I you know oh, you use all the apps, apps to the PS5. Hell yeah, baby. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. And I use uh, my smart TV apps. You, I, do, I, I interchange either back and forth, mm -hmm. um, but I just don't want to log in multiple things. I just, it's all on the PS5 and it's fine. Fair. Fair. Um, you don't want to put your information out there many in like too many places. I'm um, all about putting my credit card number. <laughs> you're like, God. And yeah, but then you know what? You get hacked and you're like, shit. Now I've got to go and log in 900 fucking times to all this other stuff. No, anyway, I love it. I think I think Amazon's just they they're stuck in the same app that they've had from the beginning. It's and it's crazy that as much money as they spend on everything, they won't they refuse to improve the interface of their but Paramount streamer. But Paramount's and Peacock, which I think are I think are actually I worse. think Paramount's got a good library though. They've got a, they both got pretty decent libraries but they are slow their their apps are their slow. apps are terrible slow and the, they want to have fucking the friedkin, football yeah, like give me a well break. yeah I, I was watching the friedkin uh documentary, documentary friedkin uncut was it on, on paramount plus okay it died on me like six times yeah it just cut out it just cut out we 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 got a, a trial for paramount plus for like 30 days or whatever it was 
uh, last year because we were wanting to watch the Mission Impossible movies. And yeah. I didn't. Oh, and this was before I, I, I now have them all in 4K. Thank God. You know, right. The listeners are, are were really worried about physical that. media has really been paying off for me lately, too. I got to tell really, you, it matters, man. It really does. And that's why I'm fucking angry at Best Buy for getting rid of uh, physical media because they were a pretty reliable place. And now it's kind of the Wild West as to where these steelbooks or these 4Ks are going to go to. And really, that's that's all that matters to me anymore. It's not going to die out, but it's definitely getting more niche. It's going to get more selective. It's very boutique. boutique yeah. 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 But the demands for it is, is it's still wild. I, 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 I think it's kind of like records a little bit. Yeah, it'll be a big resurgence. And then the Best Buy people will be like, we made a mistake. And it's like, no shit, yeah, Sherlock. We'll, we'll see. They I might go it's back. Still, it's still popular now. They should but. They should go back to just doing it online. Like the idea of them not doing it. All, I get in store, get rid of it in store. I, but like, I, just I'm online. with you. I agree with that. I like, agree with that 100%. Why, why are you getting rid of the idea of getting money? Like, if anything, the Oppenheimer thing just proved to them how stupid they looked. Well, most uh, most corporations are like, they don't care about money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What do they care about then, Jay? Um, anyway, uh, while Jay figures that out, um, just wanted to say before we get it really into the community court martial, because I, I, there is a lot to talk about with this movie. Their app that this movie lives on, it is it is Paramount Plus embedded in the into their system. Sucks ass. And I just and it sucks that it houses a really great fucking movie from William Freakin, his last movie. You have to go get a subscription to this shit service. That's all I wanted to say. That's all. Yeah. I mean it, it stinks. I'll go. I think I agree with you. Netflix one. I'm going to throw in Apple two. Oh, you're going to move Apple up a little bit. I think they put out a lot of good TV stuff and Mm. they're funding a lot of expensive, cool movies. Yeah. Argyle. Really? We love Argyle. Oh, my God. Who's who's the agent? Yeah. No, but yeah, they got they got killers. They got your movie. code. After that, it's kind of like who cares? (laughs) But they got Sofia Coppola's on the rocks. They've yeah, got, yeah. I mean, I, I, I they got look, Boy State. Disney or Disney Plus is a very important thing in my life. Oh shit! I forgot about Disney Plus. Yeah. Well, it's because Disney Plus mine's connected with uh, with Hulu. So yeah, I mean, Disney Plus has got a small library because they're it's Disney, Disney stuff. Yeah. You, oh, well, you know they've got you're getting with. Disney well, they've Plus. got some like Discovery, National Geographic, yeah, National whatever. Geographic or whatever. Uh, the fuck it is. Yeah, Discovery's max sorry yeah um yeah but i, I get I'll, that. I'll go i'll go netflix um what did i say it was two jesus uh, apple then yeah. i'll go max yeah then hulu amazon because amazon's got good stuff but oh my god see but now you're ranking it very similar to mine is this the you read? No, I think we're pretty aligned. I think we're, I think pretty, we're pretty aligned. aligned. I, 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 I won't bore and I and I would put Hulu nice, in very together. Slightly different rankings. Hulu combines together with Disney Plus. So I think that like they're all in the same sort of market. Hey, Amazon, I'll find something good, but it will take me 15 minutes. You gotta type everything out. Yeah. They're fast forward and rewind. When Terrible. we did blue chips and I had to watch it on on um on there on Prime, I was like, God, this is awful awful and that's the great thing about about netflix they have mastered the rewind and the fast forward and their, the skip and yeah, the skip their, ahead their and everything experience just, is very good I, that's why i like when everybody good. bitches and moans about like, god damn it i gotta pay more money i'm like just shut up sheeple you're gonna fucking do it anyway right? i like, i i agree it's, it's too annoying, goddamn good not to not yeah you know i'm paying what an extra 25 bucks a month or something or a year even. worth it worth it yeah I, I agree. I, I mean, I, they're funding a lot of good stuff. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, came you need court martial. Long way to get there. Um, this is obviously uh, this is based off a play. It's based off a, a novel. This is a remake ish. A remake or, of a remake of a readaptation of something. Yes. 
Now, have you now, Jay? You're mm-hmm. Mister. I like to research everything here. Yeah. Did you watch any of the other versions of the Kane Mutiny Court Martial or the Kane Mutiny? Um, so in anticipation for this. I've seen the Altman version, which was a TV movie from the late eighties, early nineties, something mm-hmm. around there. Uh, I haven't seen the the Bogart version. I've seen the Bogart movie. Have you? Do you like it? It's a good movie, but it's not as good as this though. I, I can feel the ramp up already, but it's not as good as this. Mm-hmm. And here's why that is a movie that does all show and shows you all the events and then does the trial. And then does the ending. Oh, it shows you the actual mutiny. That's mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. I like this approach better, which is how Altman Correct. approaches it as well. Correct. Both. That's why. The, the, have you seen the, the Altman version? I have not seen it, but I didn't know. I didn't. I forgot that Altman had, had done a version of this. It has a similar approach, to, more similar approach to this. Okay. Certainly. Do you, then do what, you like this or do you like the, the Altman version more? Oh, that's tough. I think I would I, still probably say the Altman version. Okay. But I really I, like that version. I like that they he uh freaking uh modernized this. Mm-hmm. Did not set this in period. Yes, though it, yeah, it does feel totally. in that. He does up this to a more a modern setting. He ups this to um post nine eleven. And mm-hmm. I think that what I find so interesting, not to usually Jay's the first to go, but I'll I'll say this my yeah, go a couple it. thoughts here real quick. Is uh, I think this is the 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 movie he's been trying to make for the last twenty years, and it's so similar to so many other movies he made. I kept thinking of Rules of Engagement. I was like, this is what he wanted to do with Rules of Engagement, and this it's like I, a course correction from Rules of Engagement. Yes, and it's like, yeah. oh wait, I can go back to this old text, but I can still talk about the military industrial complex. I can still talk about how this generation, um, lack of respect. I can make everything feel extremely tense like i do with bug i can yeah i can have singular performances by these veteran character actors shine the fucking brightest i can Kiefer is so good in this i i I will talk about keither sutherland here in a minute because i think that he is phenomenal in this i think once again jason clark proving he's one of our best that guy's an this asshole, the, but he's this so was good. The warm up for uh, for Oppie. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I mean, this is not also just the passing of William Freakin, but this is also the passing of I think a screen presence in the last twenty years that I have grown to love so much, and his presence in this movie as the uh, the commanding judge uh, or uh, the head judge in this trial, but Lance Reddick, I think, is fantastic in this he is, movie he's awesome jack lacy is a complete dude, fucking presence you know weasel and he plays it so perfectly um i think this cast up and down it's just like a, a, a freaking's ability to be able to perfectly cast this movies um and it, it in the ending of this uh, which is an ending that has been done probably in the Altman version, the original play of the book, and definitely in the in the uh, Bogart movie. Um, I have to tell you, there's something about the way in which uh, he does it here. I don't know if it's different, Jay. You can speak to the Altman version, but the way freaking ends this movie in that last five minutes is perfect. And I, 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 I don't think it like this is like his best movie. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But is it to, safe to say that this and The Hunted are the closest thing he's gotten to making damn good movies that remind you of Sorcerer and uh, French Connection to Live and Die in L.A. in that era? Oh, I think they are because, because I think that these are our forty, our thirty minute piece you know sort of genre pieces the courtroom genre the action uh chase genre you know cat and mouse thing that he's so notoriously great for and he's speaking to modern sensibilities better than when he's in these grander bigger things and i think that this almost weirdly you know we talk a lot about in this past year about how oppenheimer was a lead up to a lot of what nolan has been doing over the last 15 
years or so in his movies and his original movies and even in his Batman's this feels like freaking had been building up to making something like this and sadly he wasn't he he passed before we could truly I think give him his flowers one more time for this great adaptation of this movie yeah, I mean, it is. I think it's one of his best films, kind of post peak, yes. right? Like post post those four uh, film to run, live and right? die in L.A. Yeah, I would say is kind of where he peak starts to turn into journeyman Friedkin a little yeah. bit. Uh, but it is um, it's it's so interesting that he did kind of bring new life to the story that's been told before multiple times and maybe the only other because this is this is as much a chamber piece as anything he's ever made it almost uh, feels like it's made or the court takes uh, the whole trial takes place in a day yeah i mean it, it it doesn't but it certainly feels that way um but it's it might be two two max three days i mean it's all it's, yeah, it's it feels very, like very they had these guys ready to fucking go and we're not screwing around yeah. with this thing. Yeah, it feels very there's a sense of urgency in 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 uh in essentially this one location film. That there is a real it feels fast paced which 12 Angry Men does not even though it takes place in less time. Mhm. Mm which is a a really interesting approach. Well, that's a, that, say, that material's a slow burn yeah you know kind of that materials of I mean, a, a real build whereas yeah, it's, yeah, it's this bubbling. this film is very specifically about people coming to the stand and every time they come up you're supposed to take away two or three things that are going to build yeah. whereas there's nothing bubbling it's about like needles and needles and needles and needles over the course of the movie which i think works really well and it is a film that is so reliant on performances, which the performances here, I think, I, I think are fantastic. And it, it, what I was thinking as I watched this movie, and this might be totally just me trying to convince myself, but this has the, that super uber crisp digital cinematography, right? That kind of TV feel to it a little bit, but for me, that movie of the week kind of simplicity, I think, really adds to the tension mm. and the, that that really crisp HD kind of it's just a lot of medium shots. I think that that also gives this sense of kind of coldness and objectivity and a little bit of the indifference that occupies much of this film mm -hmm. and that is one of those things that i might be projecting out of the movie it's possible that that was kind of what the budget allowed but for me it gives it this again sense of indifference that i really really appreciated and you have these amazing scenes where various people are on the stand with these actors some of which you recognize some of which you don't uh, but but it all it does with every person it kind of fills these gaps in the mystery and really gives this pressure cooker energy to the entire endeavor i really uh really like this movie uh it's in a in a kind of a sea of mediocre to quote unquote pretty good movies in the last 35 years of friedkin's career this this is a little bit of a standout, which is really fascinating, considering that he died before it was even released. And it, and it does kind of bum me out, not just because he could have made more movies, but because I think he had more potential since he got put in director jail. I, I think there were better movies that he could have made if somebody would have let him. And yeah. the, the, you listen to him talk about kind of his career and there does seem to be as much as he loves the seventies and he acknowledges like how, how much he loves those movies and how confident he was in making those movies. And after they were released, 
there's also this lingering sense of, but if I didn't have to make these movies with these scripts that were just kind of thrown at me, maybe I could have made a few more masterpieces. And this doesn't reach masterpiece level, but it reaches kind of the the heights of what this movie could be considering the, the, the budget and the it's a cable movie really is what it is it, it, 20 years ago 30 years ago this is going to tnt jade Whatever, this is right? just this is why last year we were in inundated with the courtroom drama yeah we were, well, it's we, a COVID. it's a COVID movie it sure. was no i mean we were we were living in a year in 2023 where the courtroom drama ruled like you think about it you have a movie like this mm -hmm. comes out the burial anatomy of a fall there's courtroom sequences yeah. in both oppenheimer and killers of the flower moon sure like there it was in a, it was in what is interesting about that you find the truth and you find humanity and you find complexity within that because especially in this movie what is the truth like in, in anatomy of a fall we see the most pivotal scene right the the scene that everybody talks about the most in that movie is the 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 thing right in the middle where it's them it's the husband and the wife having the massive argument right mm -hmm. this movie is all just about you having to be you know see through the poker faces of these military A true rashomon yeah kind of situation i mean even yeah i mean like the over accountment and and it really puts you a lot of the times not through the eyes of clark or through the prosecutor uh monica Ra raymond who is uh fantastic in this film too yeah she's very good she's very good here but it's almost putting you through the eyes of the judge uh through lance reddick a lot um and where the camera is placed and solely you're having to look at these actors these character actors these young character actors come in and have to deliver and see through who is lying and who is telling the truth now obviously jay you and i and anybody that's seen a version of this story knows how it's going to end i think way freaking does it here is is extremely interesting he has um you know greenwald played by jason clark that scene at the beginning is was great i don't know if that again i have not seen the altman version so i i've only going off of seeing how this is done through kind of the old hollywood system right where it's a grand battleship epic that then mm -hmm. ends up into a courtroom drama at the end and the courtroom yeah, no, stuff the, the altman movies is, is pretty much like this okay so you see the 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 shot it's of le it's even less formal than this movie okay because like merrick and, and greenwald uh have this moment at the beginning where he's like i think you're guilty but i'm going to defend you anyway mm -hmm. you know what i mean and and sort of the reason why he's doing it is be and he explains it because he essentially does every tactic in the book to try to throw uh uh commander Quig, uh Kiefer sutherland in this case um tries to you know say that he's insane and that that's why he was lacking this man who's been in the navy for 20 plus years was relieved of duty in 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 mutiny dawn was because he was unfit to serve right he becomes the prosecutor really so yeah he really does and he he flips it and and i want to say like it's a 25 minute uh, 30 minute sequence with him and sutherland at the end at the end it's yeah. the it's the meat of this movie um and it's all building to this i mean we get he hooks sutherland he yeah. absolutely he destroys well done <laughs> overdone <steak. laughs> um because like i mean he's doing essentially the bogart i don't know who in the altman version is is uh is this um case. you know who do you no, remember it was uh, I, I need to look it up but keep anyway, uh anyway talking. um in that movie it's it's i mean you have humphrey bogart in this role and and everything but really in this the the lead oh, yeah that's right it's eric bogosian oh ooh, yeah. okay all right 
That would have been really good. Man, I got it. Can you check that out somewhere? Or did you have to like rip it or, or like, uh, I don't remember, but okay. I will let you, he'll, he'll let me know off air. Yes. Um, <laughs> cause he might've ripped that one folks. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's got a great cast. It's got Jeff Daniels, Peter Gallagher, Michael Murphy. It's it, a, it, it's a really good cast. I mean, Altman was kind of in that same lane too for a little bit. And then he had to do some of those TV movies as well too. So, um, oh, yeah, his eighties yeah. were even more bleak than Friedkin's the Freakins. And then he uh, made the player and then, he yeah. And he was like, Hey, I'm back. Uh, remember yeah. when I got to make great movies? Um, but no, I just, uh, what was I trying to say? Anyway, back to the point here that I was making this movie to me is, is just super focused on these characters. And that's the thing is, is that from the version that I've seen that movie is, like, okay, we know we have Humphrey Bogart, and we know we've got these other actors too, but clearly we're all building up to this moment where Humphrey Bogart is in, is is getting a showcase, essentially, just like, you know, just like Sutherland gets here, but it's all building to that, and it's very Hollywood. And then also by the end, that ending is very much like, well, you guys did a terrible thing to this man, and how could you have done this? And it's very po- it's very proper. And then it essentially everybody turns on, on Merrick at the end, or they turn on, uh, on Kiefer, uh, not Kiefer Sutherland, but Ke- uh, Lieutenant Kiefer, Lewis Pullman in this case, they turn mm-hmm. on him. And then that's, it's kind of like, that's how the movie ends because it's about more about the group rather than what this is about, what the play is about, which is the singular, the two individuals and essentially the singular instead of, and kind of the military complex, like yes. the entire thing. Yeah, that makes it more just about the ship and the crew and everybody there. This is about the system. This is about the system. And that's what it's so fascinating because when you put it into a modern context and then about like the book deal and everything that, that Clark talks about at the end, it, it he essentially destroyed this man, but he didn't want to do it. And everybody's going to pop champagne and celebrate at the idea of that they got rid of, they murdered this guy. The idea of the word murder being used here Mm -hmm. um as like oh you instead of like oh you crushed him or that no you murdered him in there it's it's really a fascinating thing and then when you just look at the the relationship that freaking has had with authority figures the system uh and his against the grain protagonists it fits perfectly into the idea that he would make this because you've seen it, we've seen it all the way from uh, even the boys in the band, these imperfect the souls, and and how through those imperfections and the social political structures and systems that they're a part of, that they branch out, and what that says about them, what that says about us, I think is really fascinating here, and it's this is a just a much better way of delivering all these messages and i think that that's why he it's safely that he goes back into this mode into this mode of like i mean obviously the sort of original source material rather than making it what you're saying jay which is what kind of old hollywood did which is the kind of grander idea and taking this movie from the out and bringing it and then bringing it in by the end it's like no this should be here and it should stay here and it should get tighter and tighter and tighter as things go along uh, and the events are unfolding per mm-hmm. the information that is being given to uh, on the stand. I can hear the old Hollywood music swelling in my mind of the finale of, uh, <laughs> of, of that version, even though I haven't seen it, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, I and, mean, it's I mean, good for that era, but like, it's not, it doesn't have a point of view of saying anything. No, I, 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 I totally Altman understand. And, and definitely yeah, freaking. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I hate how Casablanca ends. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's obviously a lot of the times that stuff is. Uh, I mean, it does help that the two people that got it right are two of the most cynical directors that we've ever covered in our history. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and I haven't seen the original, so I, I can't speak yeah. to it. Uh, I think a lot of people really like it. But it's a good that, it's, it's a good really movie, famous, but I prefer those. Yeah. It, it's a really famous teleplay and play. And, uh, yeah. you know, this is this is something that many people have thought very highly of for a long time but it it does make sense to me that he would make this again because like you're saying 
this guy who doesn't believe in his client who has been accused of doing an evil act but has to defend him anyway is the most freaking thing imaginable <laughs> where it is entirely about the good and evil that exist in all of us and this idea of of, of fate and obligation and and all that stuff but it's also a movie that takes place in one room pretty much more mm -hmm. or less and he did get a lot of these great character actors to come in and really get their opportunity to shine um and at the forefront of this film and it, it is sad to see lance reddick you know give a, a really stellar performance here and uh and for this to be freakin's last film but it is a film that just continues to build and build and build extremely effectively and uh, you might consider a courtroom drama sort of free money where there's a built-in tension to it, but this goes far beyond the average courtroom drama, in my opinion, just from, again, that, that objectivity that the movie possesses. I think the bottleness bottledness of it, where it does all take place in one room is actually an asset to this film whether it was by necessity or by design, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. There's not a ton of production history behind this one, as you no. might expect for a basically Showtime movie with no marketing whatsoever. Uh, that is That really only got any traction, unfortunately, because Freaking passed away. Um, but it, it is an extraordinarily compelling movie. And I think about... Uh, the Rules of Engagement, which I watched, you've seen, and I was I found the ending of that film to be kind of detestable, where the conclusion of that movie is just a soldier's a soldier, man, whether you were from Vietnam or America, you got to salute the soldier on either side. And in this film, it's not a completely dissimilar message. But it is more an acknowledgement of the messy honorability of joining the U.S. military, even if you were joining the military under slightly false pretenses, there's a certain amount of respect that comes with uh, joining the military in the first place, and sort of the inherent um, honor that comes with that. It, it, there's a little bit of conservatism and old school attitude at the core of this movie, but I don't think it is entirely unearned in any way whatsoever. It is William Friedkin kind of reflecting on the people that he's known and the experience, uh, the experiences of of people that he's known being in the military, it's a. I, I find it to be a very compelling kind of case for all of this, and in a really empathetic reflection on this type of service. Well, you know something, Jay. You talk about the production of this, and you talk about the history of this already. It does actually have history behind it. Okay, it does have. Some really interesting anecdotes, and I think the first thing is Look at from Ryan research over from here. the There's man up in me. Well, I well I think it's interesting because um, we talked a lot. I think in the last couple episodes about like his contemporaries of the seventies have gone on to make their mark and make their movie, make a movie that is that is you know to the level and standard like that they can get back to. Right, you know, like to to have the scale and scope, and 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 have they who who who? Well, or maybe they branched off, and maybe they've been well, they've been able to get second runs, or they've been able to get a, a second bite of the apple, or they've been able to. I mean, you look at, I mean, Spielberg sustained, De Palma got to make stuff. Coppola was sort of he made some stuff. But... I mean, Marty is is a contemporary of his. Yeah, you know? Marty um, Marty's just a, he's in his own league, man. But I mean, you talk about Altman, that's a contemporary, and that's somebody, or you know, or someone around that. They went on and, to make uh, the player. Yeah. I mean, the Gosford Park is an example of like you get to make this very. I mean, yes, it's it, it it that's not a cheap movie to make. 
short you know shortcuts that's play, like, you know, like that's a know. chamber piece in a lot of ways too but it's this very extravagant Ravigant, you know, elegant piece. julian yeah. fellows written chamber piece and the player know? and shortcuts i mean those are like yeah those are real mo- those are whole movies and people those are funded the Hollywood shit out of movies. those yeah, yeah exactly but k-mutiny court martial he said is a film that i've long awaited to make originally written by one of the masters of our tide uh harold wonk um, I knew that I wanted to create a highly tense pressurized scenario, which we would move rapidly along like a bat out of hell. I intentionally chose to keep the issue of right and wrong as uh, ambiguous as possible. And, uh, and he believed that by doing so, he created some of the best performances that he has ever filmed, uh, which is right there with, with freaking patting himself on the back. But, Jay, this was this was. You almost could feel like he knew something. He knew that this might have been the last one, so that's why there was uh, an in- an intent. Because if you read behind yeah. the scenes, um, like this is the one he's long wanted to make. He has the studio uh, blessing. He says, "I need a, a director in case I don't finish this." Um, he 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 has Guillermo del Toro. Be yeah, his, it's his, like uh, Paul Thomas it, Anderson and Altman with like, uh, yeah. Prairie Home Companion. Yeah. And the way in which del Toro talks about freaking who we all know freaking to be a wild card, a straight shooter from the gun, it's big a mouth bit of a troll. But this is what this is what del Toro said. Right. He's, uh, this is according to uh, sources that according to Del Toro, rather than scold a particular actor who stumbled over a critical line several times, freaking instead just asked, you want to do it again in an hour or so, or we pick it up tomorrow. And Del Toro said the gesture was healing, soothing, and put the entire set back in control. I had seen at the ripe age of 58, that of the many tools in Billy's arsenal, kindness was the one most effective for this film. And when I that read... That is not his reputation historically. It's not, it's not the historically his reputation. That is not his reputation on Killer Joe, his no. second to last movie. Yeah, I know, I know. But it almost feels... Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to kind of talk about it, but it almost knew that he knew that he only had this one, this moment of kind of reflection. Yeah. And And so when you're talking about him reflecting back on his past appreciation and he's reflecting on the type of movies we've talked about, the type of issues that he's explored countless times in various different ways. That is his legacy is the idea of being able to look at our inherent systems Primarily, our our institutions like the military and police and detectives in these cases, and evaluate them for very different complex lenses, and find the moral gray areas to be the most fascinating of those. And he does that here again. And then the ending of this movie, the final shot, the final frame is so fucking William freaking that it almost as if he there is the one throwing the glass in Kiefer's face yeah, and throwing that sky cuts it off and he cuts he's, it off yeah. is and gets to the needle drop and it's over. It's like, holy fucking shit. Wow. He Clark, nailed it. Uh, Clark owns that final scene too. He, yes. He's just incredible. And, and Lewis Pullman has, one of the more punchable faces I've Bob seen himself <laughs> in the last couple of years in that scene. Cause he's just got who, uh, you know, Bill Pullman's son. Uh, yeah. and he's just got that. He's just got that. Ooh, you've it's just, you've so actually never, the, you've never actually worked a day in your life. Huh? It's, it's funny mm-hmm. that he's the nerd in Top Gun and you're like, Oh, he's so adorable. And then and, in this, he's <laughs> like he's, the ultimate oh asshole. My God, you're, yeah, you're, just, you're a trust fund. Ugh. I you 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 have you're the one actually ruining institutions more than the man that you threw off the boat and and it is yeah, yeah it, it is throughout 
that whole thing that Freakin has been exploring for his entire career, that existence of good and evil within every person. Yeah. Whether it's the and, and it and it's almost that thing too where you you don't even know whether these people think they're in the wrong or in the right. There is this gray area that exists in everything, but in a courtroom, it becomes less about truth and more about perception, right? Mm -hmm. And the perception of good and evil is almost a more interesting thing to explore than the inherent truth uh, or uh, good and evil that exists within all of us. And, and he does an incredible job in this film of not just being this surface level pressure cooker, but really this kind of philosophical exploration of what it means to be honorable and what it means to fulfill your duty and when it is okay to betray that duty that you uh, think you may have or that other people think you may have. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just done in this really effective way where there's probably what, like eight, eight ish people who go on the stand and every single one of them is a building block to the ultimate divide, uh, demise of Puig um, mm. in the film. And Kiefer Sutherland is immaculate in the film, especially yeah. in that final sequence. And he's, I miss guy, Kiefer. I miss Kiefer. He's yeah. He's, he's had his personal demons for yeah. sure. And I know that, you know, never been and, the easiest guy to work with. No, nope, you watch 24. I watched 24 religiously. I was going to ask you this. Yeah. 24 was the fucking show. It that was we all the watched. Show. It was I, like, I would talk about that with everybody Monday morning at school. You see the new episode of 24. It was 24 and lost. Everybody fucking yeah, exactly. talked about those exactly. two fucking shows because it was so like, oh my God, can you believe our parents are letting us fucking watch 24? Like that's so fucking. And like, he was a god, man. It was like because you could, we I couldn't watch the the you know Sopranos until a little bit later, but right. Uh, but man, like yeah, Sutherland was like ridiculously good on that show. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love look. I love Jack Bauer. I love in uh, the Alicia Cuthbert Cuthbert season of Twenty Four <laughs> where he kicks a drug habit in 24 hours uh, or like probably like more like 12 hours. Uh, he, he goes cold Turkey off drugs. I got to, I got, I got to tell you the concept of 24. If we were around one there of the, the more time, ridiculous shows, if we were around and doing podcasts, if that also, was maybe something one of that the existed. more offensive shows, potentially. Oh we yeah. Just went just Tot when it was made. Yeah. It's totally offensive. That was an interesting time in cultural. It is. A, that's why. Well, every time they've tried to reboot it, it's never worked because like it, it is a relic of its era. And in, it, it was, it was great at the time, but yeah, like, I'm never going to watch that show again. And I'm just going to let it sit, sit exactly. Cause I know, of, cause I know sunlight on yeah, it in my memory. I know what that show is like now. I know what, I know what it is. And listen, it, I, I'm not going to take away it undeniably. My oh yeah. I think he won. Didn't he win yeah. like Emmys or something for it? I'm too, sure he so did. Like, um you probably want a medal of honor i don't know <laughs> well i always see i always i had i had two movies that i always remember keith or sutherland growing up for and it's two courtroom dramas two movies that i when i was growing up and i remembered a lot with keith or sutherland mm -hmm. were uh, a, a time to kill because mm -hmm. he plays a, a racist son of a bitch in that movie and a few good men which is a of movie course, yeah, where he sure. is just an absolute asshole. And like, and, and I was, I just always assume like, okay, that's who Keith or Sutherland is in real life. Not far from the truth. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, you know, an interesting guy, interesting man. But, uh, but yeah, I always remembered him there. So the idea of him being this character in this movie, that has also been, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's been Humphrey Bogart before and he makes it his own thing mm -hmm. and it's so dynamite and you can, you cannot in this performance hide the wheels turning in one's brain to come up with enough coverage to, for, for Queen to essentially 
try to justify his moral actions or immoral actions in his style. And that two things can be true by the end of this movie, Jay. It can be that his, his way of doing a way of commanding is outdated and not of modern times, but that he's also potentially not someone that should have to have been forced out this way. Because that's the thing is like, right. do you think that the mutiny is justifiable based off what we see and what we know, not just by the end, but by the evidence presented in the stories and the in 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 the testimony given? It doesn't necessarily justify it. It does by the end show that yes, he probably needed to be replaced just because he's old and his way of doing things is is again it's outdated it's in, it's not fresh but to say that all his accomplishments of his career get just thrown into the in, into a fire because yeah. of one bad mistake there's a black and white nature to it all that it's it's yeah it's it's not it eventually no, jason clark acknowledges is not a reality no the gray definitely lives there and, and that's, that's freaking man yeah that's freaking it's this rebel, this rebel guy, dude. He's right there with it the it's whole like time. Evil exists inside of me, and it exists inside of you. And there's no such thing as a true hero. Were you angry? I would see. I was angry in this movie when every time Jason Clark tried to get to this line of questioning to Kiefer Sutherland, or essentially implied that he is exactly why they got rid of him in the, in the mutiny. Like, you know what I mean? Like why they overthrew him is because of his mental state. And they're like, and they're like, how dare you try to go to this line of questioning? And it's, it's like, come on guys. Like that's the only way he can go down this Avenue. And when yeah, he has yeah. to, I mean, it is like, okay, counter it. Yeah. Right? And it's like, and well, and Kiefer Kiefer caves in on himself is what happens. Yeah. That's what it is. It's, it's we, actually got really nothing to do with Jason Clark. Or the actions, it's, it's just the pressure. No, and Kiefer but, sells yeah. it so well. As it soon does, as he busts yeah. out the metal balls, you're like, oh, he's cooked. He's cooked. He's 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 dying here. He's on the yeah. yeah. Well, as soon as they start talking about the booze, and he's like, oh, it's like kids' toys and books and shit in there, and you're like, come on, dude, you okay. damn well know. Just say it. Just say some alcohol is in there. It's it. And it's, then he's oh. like, oh, you know what? Maybe there were two crates. Mm. And it's like two crates. And he's like, oh, I'm mixing up one crate. And they're like, you need a recess. What is it and that Reddick says at one point? He's like, Queeg, Lieutenant Queeg, I urge you to dig inside your memory for <laughs> these details because the deck seems in, also entirely stacked against the the you know. Um, uh, Merrick. Jack Lace. Yeah, Merrick. It's it's completely is because nobody wants to sit there. The systems are built so that men like Quig aren't questioned or they are protected. But it and and like they said, this is like the second mutiny that's happened in the in naval history. Yeah. So that's why we're talking about this today. And you know, Monica Redman, who again is great as the lead prosecutor here. When she, when right in the middle of her, you got to love it, man. She, she is pushing back the entire time at, at Clark's assumptions of the idea of that, that, you know, that this captain of this ship is, is, you know, is not within his right frame of mind. So even in her closing argument, she tries to get him dis, essentially disbarred and put on something put on his record for even suggesting it. And you got to love Lance Rick. He's like, You've been tapping on the line all throughout yeah. this trial. And and then once he explains it to him, he's like, I didn't have another choice. I didn't want to take this fucking thing, but you fucking made me do it. So, and, and he, he selected me. So I built the case appropriately. Yeah. I did what any other person had to do in order to get here. You asked me to abandon any moral obligation to this And when case that's gone, act you're... on behalf of my client. Yeah. And so, so when therefore, that's therefore I played to win. Yeah. And that is as dirty as it can be, but that's what you had me do otherwise we were going to essentially kill this kid. And then there you know is I mean? this kind of um 
sense and then who gets murdered over the course of time that he he seems to kind of convince himself that Merrick is actually a decent guy who may have done the right thing but then when he sees this celebration and them being completely indifferent to the implications of the trial he just loses it he he loses it and yeah i mean like he ends up going to he ends up telling the story about like that he ended up going to have drinks with the lead prosecutor uh to like what trying to like smooth things out or you know whatever basically just be like it it wasn't personal yeah and everything and and then when he gets there yeah it's like it's like they you know they're celebrating they got the cake and this book and it's all and I Kiefer mean, has sold a bunch of copies of this novel, kind of condemning the the military. The and, yeah. And he sits there and it's like, oh, good for you. Because you put in so much work and your life has been so, uh, so also, harsh. You're, still wearing, you're celebrating this book in the uniform. Yes. Right. Because you, really, you really gave it to him. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's so good. Because he's, feels he's very right. Formative. Yeah. Yeah. It's it all feels as if you have you did this even on purpose so that you can make yourself famous. And that you it's yeah, like it was all it's it, like, this wasn't driven by pride or yeah. morality. This was driven by profit. Yeah. And it's like you have always wanted to be a writer. You and have I, no moral center. Yeah. You have no direction. And he's like, while all of us were thinking about the idea of getting out of school or writing our little fantasies or whatever he's kind at of least to, Puig has he was ready to go a philosophy yeah and he and he's lived a by that sense code. of self yeah. yeah and he's and he's says to him by the end he's just like that man deserves a hell of a lot more than a you to celebrate with a slice of cake his demise he's a dinosaur he's clearly not at his mental peak but he has a sense of purpose yeah that goes beyond money yeah which is an interesting thing to portray because there is this idea that maybe the mutiny was if not necessary appropriate you know uh and that ambiguity is what gives the the story its power yeah Never and, showing it, and you said they did show it in the original, right? With Humphrey Bogart. The, yeah, they're on the they're on that fucking ship. So they make it black and white, like the mutiny was the right thing to do. I mean, there is there is ambiguity within it as well, kind of shown. But I mean, you can clearly the movie is clearly trying to make Humphrey Bogart the bad guy at the end. It's a movie movie. star movie. Yes, it's a movie star movie, yeah. and 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 by the end. Greenwald still gives them the the speech and everything or a version of it. Mm-hmm. But I mean it's 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 still essentially you you you're making you got Humphrey Bogart there. He's in a, a supporting It's not a role. William Friedkin movie. No, it's it's not it's not cynical by any nature. It's like, well, I need you to reflect on what you did wrong. You know what I mean? Cuz he may not have been as bad as we think roll the title credits folks yeah you know how yeah. abruptly this ends is is jarring but love the use of jarring love the use of dirty lowdown as yeah as because that's exactly how it kind of feels like yeah. it, it, and it's what a fucking wonderful way to just yeah clark is kind of clark is awesome in this as i as i think back on it He's, clark's another dude we talked about uh my uh michael shannon a couple of weeks ago yeah, and Bug, he he, he he did feel like a guy who was kind of going to be bigger. Although he keeps doing smaller stuff in bigger movies, right? He did Terminator. He did. Um, but he was in plan the plan of the he was in Don the Apes. Don of the Plan of the Apes. He was in Gatsby. He's in Zero Dark Thirty. He's done a ton of stuff. Yeah, he's yeah Mudbound. You know. Um, remember everest where he's on that movie everest. everest oh yeah he was uh, in first man he's in first man and serenity uh but he was that lead in the pet cemetery remake oh yeah the pet cemetery um, remake. he of was course. one of like the 900 people in the devil all the time and yeah he's that dude is working no he doubt about it and he's working I mean, in pretty big movies and he had 
a fantastic year. <laughs> um, he had a fantastic year last year. I mean, he is fantastic in this movie, I think. And he is one of the, one of the great supporting performances in Oppenheimer as Roger Robb. Oh man, let's power is, rank Oppenheimer. Who is who is almost who is really honestly the antithesis to Greenwald in a lot of ways. This 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 fucking asshole that's out to 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 just get Oppie. You know? Who is the best? Oppenheimer performance that is not nominated for an Oscar. Okay, so you have to throw out obviously Killian Murphy, Killian and Downey, I guess. Robert Downey Jr. and well, and Emily Blunt cuz she's nominated as well too. Did she end up getting nominated? Yes, she did. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to pick her anyway. So I know you weren't. That's no. fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um This is tough. This is this is tough. Do you have one? I go Casey Affleck. I mean, yeah. He I was, is a manifestation of evil in that he's movie. So good in that one scene. It's it's inc- he's incredible. And also the idea of like just how no one builds the tension to finally see him. He's this mythic figure. Yeah. I, I've got to tell you, I mean, there's so many. I do the, think I, Damon is incredible. I was just gonna say, Matt Damon. It's kind of underrated. We honestly in, don't in, appreciate Damon enough at not this point in his career. Appreciating Matt Damon. And it's fucking crazy because he is a movie star and he comes into this movie and he's fucking great. It kind yeah, of blows about, my mind yeah. that he didn't get like a great in cons- air. Air got no nothing. It's got nothing, nothing, man. I mean, he's great um, in the last duel. Stillwater is one of my like why did we not talk about Stillwater? It's good movie. Movies? Yeah. He's great in that movie too. No sudden move. He's got a great one scene performance in that movie. Oh, the Soderbergh. Is mm-hmm. that the Benicio uh, Don Cheadle movie? Yeah, Cheadle. Yeah. Oh my god. I think Soderbergh just might be one of my guys through and through. Because every time I think about his movies, the ones that are, I mean, most of his are really, really good movies. He's only got maybe like one or two stinkers. I just think Soderbergh's my guy. I think I just need to accept that. He's the best. Yeah. I've seen every Soderbergh movie. I, I'm He's pretty great. close to you. Yeah. His worst movie, The Laundry Mat, easily. Um, Is that his worst movie? Let me see. Hold on. Um, As you're looking that up. I oh, say, I hate Unsane. I hate. Oh, that. yeah. Unsane's not very good either. That's right. Um, you know, it's either that or The Laundry Mat for me. You know that they're releasing Contagion on 4K soon? Uh, interesting. Yeah, great movie. I love that movie. It's um, a very good movie. Oppenheimer supporting cast members? I mean, I will make I will give you this. As much as I love Jason Clark, I would not say in the courtroom proceedings, I guess, um, that he is actually the best performance in the courtroom of all the lawyers. I think Macon Blair is fantastic He's in, very good. in the film. Um, I think I think even Tony Goldwyn. Also, is you a, know what? Tom yeah. Conti deserves more praise than he's got. Tom Conti's great. I love Benny Safty. I don't understand how Benny Safty was not a part of the SAG Ensemble qualifications. Oh, um, is that right? But Rami Malik was. That's crazy. Um, not that Rami Malik's bad. Rami Malik, very good. He's um, holding the hell out of that clipboard, dude. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that. Uh, the the have you heard the John Mulaney? Uh, he did the uh, the Governor's Award at the Oscars, and they mm-hmm. were uh, they were um, they were honoring the the cinema the the editor uh, this uh, uh, this this editor that was big in the industry, mm-hmm. and she was one of the the big stories that she was known for was cutting Kevin Costner out of the Big Chill. A movie I know you just a, a saw. A movie I just watched for the first time. And didn't really like, right? No, not, not a fan. What didn't you like about the Big Chill? Um, Boomer Daydream. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah, just found yeah. it to be severely lacking any true uh, uh, conflict. Interesting. Interesting. Um, It was Carol Carol Littington, Littleton, um, who's... Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, she's... She received the honorary Oscar and um, Mulaney made the joke of like, you think she was behind like Rami Malek's performance and why we only saw him for like one scene in that whole film. 
Um, and, and because she saw it and said, I hate Malik. And then I'm out of here. And, and because she cut Costner, cause Costner's only like, what at the beginning of the big chill? Well, he's the dead, uh, the dead guy. Yeah. He's in the coffin and yeah. he's, he has a bigger storyline and everything. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, nah, that's okay. Um, but anyway, I mean, Crumholtz. He's great. Crumholtz also just been killing it on Twitter. Dude's electric. Like it's an electric follow. He's been insane. Um, his his going after Barry Keoghan um, has is. I mean, honestly, who who wouldn't? You know, he's great. Um, I mean, they're all good, man. Hartnett has gotten a lot of press for his kind of comeback thing. Although he's really he's really good. This was this comeback? I haven't seen Wrath of Man. I was just gonna say, Wrath of Man's really good. And uh, Kenneth Branagh doing a goofy accent in Christopher Nolan movies we need to make that an obligation in every nolan movie moving forward oldman 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 gary fucking oldman he comes Uh, in and just throws down a 360 between the legs dunk but then also like ting dahan is excellent as the sniveling little bastards as is aaron reich i was gonna say alden aaron reich he's just oh they're both so goddamn good in that movie i mean literally the best cast of the year now it was is no it, question it, it is it's it's hard just, to argue just get it's over it people like just it was it's the best movie of the year yeah that's a movie that honestly i don't feel like it's become cool to dunk on oppenheimer just because i still feel like most people are like yeah it's great it's one of those where it's like okay dunk on it but it's pretty fucking undeniable and you know people, I mean? yeah like, I, I i honestly don't feel like there's been i i Will this come out after the Oscars? This mm-hmm. episode, mm-hmm. it will. So I might sound like an idiot. I don't see a world where it doesn't win Best Picture. Oh shit! God damn it, Jay! Don't timestamp this. And um, <laughs> you know, I, I I just don't feel like too many people are going to be super bummed out by that because I think people just. Like I mean, if it movie. doesn't if it doesn't win, it would be be kind of crazy because at the time of recording this we're we're pretty close to it pretty much winning it seems inevitable yeah but it also seems right like that's not a bad thing exactly exactly it's like it's not one of those where you're like i'm gonna bring it up it's the favorite movie you always like to fucking bring up over the last couple of years it's not like when coda happened oh and we started and we started coda we know we're not doing coda talk but but you know what i'm trying to say like when that one started becoming the consensus pick we kind of were like, we d- do we really have to do that? And you could already feel the hate I'm, bubbling I'm to the top. That was just like, all right, we've all got COVID. We're all pe- like cooped up in our houses. All of our brains are broken. Let's give it to Coda. <laughs> I felt like it, it. Seriously, it was like we need a warm hug, and what better than? Yeah, that that does feel right. And also, yeah. I think Apple just did like a good job. Yeah, they. they well, I don't. I, yeah, I mean, they kind of did in a lot of ways. But anyway. No, I think that um, Clark's just good at playing kind of this kind of an asshole. Um, but then, yes. but but he's but morally, you can't stop looking at the camera and rooting for him. And um, I know he's just a fantastic presence in this movie. And um, good actor, good at his job. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the K Mutiny Court Martial? Hell of a hell of a title too. Just like um, just a mouthful. Because the Bogart one is just called Kane Mutiny, right? Yeah, the Kane Mutiny. Yeah. And the Altman one is called Kane Mutiny Court Martial. Okay. But, so they, uh, so this is just keeping on brand. Yeah. I don't, I honestly, I don't know that I have anything else. It's, well, I'm not the biggest Jake Lacey fan in the world, but I think he's good in this. I think he's pretty good in this. Yeah. Like, when did we decide Jake Lacey's supposed to be a thing? Is it because he's like White Lotus? Yeah, but like before that, I guess he's like in a bunch of like mumblecore shit. I mean, he's he's pretty good. We talked about him a little bit in Carol, um, because he plays like the asshole boyfriend that she she leaves uh, to go be with Carol. But like, he's not very good in like being the Ricardos or Rampage. He was in Rampage. I remember nothing about that movie. I uh, oh, 
I thought it was. Oh, I'm thinking of Rampart, which is I think the Woody Harrelson movie. Rampage is oh, the, the monkey movie, the the video game movie that The, the Rock. Rock did. Yeah, I don't. I never fucking saw that movie, and you could never pay me to see it. Um, but yeah, I I've not seen uh, the first season of The White Lotus. Uh, so I really, yeah. So I I it's quite good. That's what I hear. I hear it. It is very very good, and I don't know if it's uh, the rare TV show that i watched i know because you're a big mike white guy um but uh I, 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 I he got nominated for looks like supporting actor and lost to murray bartlett but is he is he good on the show he's, he's just he's kind okay of playing a version he's of an not, asshole he's not one of the guys that pops necessarily no. but he's who pops on that show murray bartlett yeah for sure yeah coolidge coolidge I mean, yeah, obviously Coolidge. Who else from the first season? I mean, Sydney Sweeney certainly makes an impression. Well, okay. Now you're just talking about favorite people <laughs> of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't know Sydney Sweeney was on the White Lotus. She is in the first season of White Lotus. Well, now, I, now, uh, excuse me. Uh -oh. I need to go watch the rest of uh, White Lotus, then I guess season one. Um, okay. And Connie, Connie Britton, too. Um, oh, you know, I mean, one of my guys is, um, oh my God, I can't remember his name. The guy from that thing you do. Tom, Tom Hanks. Steve. Oh, uh, Steve Zahn. Steve Zahn. Yes. I freaking love Steve Zahn and he ops in that for sure. All right. I'm going to have to give it a, I'm going to have to give it a go. I'm going to finally Steve sit Zahn. down and oh, man. watch that series because I know that, that they've got the third season already. Well, they're already filming the third season. I got to say, the cast originally, the um, the rumored cast list was fantastic, and the the one that has actually been revealed is not uh, not as. You don't like it? Oh, Molly Shannon is also great in season one. Wait a minute. So, like, okay, Leslie Bibb, and then Christian Friedel from Zone of Interest, Walton Goggins. I mean, yeah. Jason this is, Isaacs? This there so there's a few. I mean Carrie Michelle Coon, Monahan? Harry Coon Harry is Coon? very exciting. Parker Posey? Uh Goggins is very exciting. Like not many of the others are doing a ton for me. Les, Leslie Bibb, utterly indifferent. I don't know, buddy. I think you're I think you're I don't know. I think I think I I I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, season two is very good too, and that has an amazing cast. Yeah, I mean, it's got it's got my guy, F. Murray Abraham, in it, and uh, and Coolidge returns, obviously, and Haley Lou Richardson. She Haley needs Richardson. to be a star. You know who is a star? Fucking Aubrey Plaza. Fucking love yes, Aubrey Plaza. she has become a star. Yeah, and Theo uh, James. That's where. Hey, you know what? I, didn't I dog on Theo James a couple of weeks ago, or last week, or something like that? I don't know um for so what go. i don't know i can't remember time's Being a flat too circle. handsome he is pretty handsome he's a pretty handsome guy uh, theo james you know yes I mean? so anyway jay we're here at the end of this series yes and uh well before we get out of here we got a couple of things we got to do yeah we, we've got plenty of stuff left i got plenty of stuff left to do well first things first mm -hmm. we're gonna test your award season knowledge based on the film that we just reviewed yeah and a segment we like to call it's an honor to get nominated now jay this is a little bit difficult because this movie is not eligible for the academy well Awards. right ends yeah that's true it could you be never know but this will be eligible next year for the emmys oh um, man yes this and is this is beyond the pale but this was nominated at a major award ceremony uh -huh. already. It was nominated at the Critics' Choice Awards. Oh. And uh, so, Jay, how many Critics' Choice nominations did it get? <laughs> oh, boy. See, I don't pay attention to the Oscars, but boy, do I pay attention to the Critics' Choice Awards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is this up for like best best TV movie is that what it has to be nominated for maybe 
so best I, I honestly don't even know what the awards for critics choice are best tv movie and best lead performance in a tv movie that's what i'm going with and who was the actor nominated Kiefer. that those are correct those are both the the nominations i told got, you buddy. i paid to very close attention to the uh to the critics choice awards it uh it lost both of those awards how dare they to who okay so are you are you ready i'm ready because i will let me just pull it up here um i love doing this live by the way we just love doing yeah, it. this is good audio um so best actor in a limited series so they combine mm-hmm. limited series and movie made for yes. tv uh-huh. together uh-huh. so kiefer sutherland was nominated for oh, the so community court martial tony shalhoub for mr monk's last chance a monk movie they did a monk movie they did a monk movie monk is back and better than ever better than ever well i wouldn't i wouldn't say better um than see ever. what the but critics yeah. had to say <laughs> see what the critics had to say david o yellow for lawman bass reeves sure a show that is on paramount plus um <laughs> america has lawman fever tom holland for the crowded room but i got not wait, what what is apple that? tv plus Okay. Mad Bomber for Fellow Travelers. Okay. I've seen Fellow Travelers. I um, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I at least have heard of it. Very good. Uh Jonathan Bailey won supporting actor and he's phenomenal on the show. And of course they all lost to Steven Yun for beef. Got it. Still okay. haven't seen beef, but Yeah, me either. I still haven't watched it's beef. It's not like I have beef with beef, I, but I, I I'm I'm always behind on television. Jay knows yeah. this. I'm watching. I gotta watch movies. I'm a movie guy. I gotta watch 25 freaking movies. Exactly. That's what we're here to do. Um, would you give it to Kiefer, or I guess you keep it with Yun just for now as a place? I, I haven't seen any of those, so I'm gonna give it to Kiefer. Okay. There you go. Uh, I would. Yeah, I give it to Kiefer. Why not? Um, probably keep it with Yun. I love Stephen Yun. I love Stephen Yun as well, but he's a very nice guy. But I've watched Kiefer's performance. He's a nice guy. Is he? Yeah. Well, we hang out all the time. I, I met him at Chris Choice. Yeah, well, I hang out with him all the time. Oh, yeah. You got a beer with him last week. Tom, yeah. you, I, if you want a funny Tom Holland he story. Got a little, he got a little testy. I was So where I was seated at, at Critics Choice this year, Tom Holland was like, if I just look to the right and look, look just off my right shoulder, table over, Tom Holland was right there. The minute this category went to Steven Yun, you know what Tom Holland did? He went home. He's like, I'm not staying any longer than that. He said, Ryan, can you tell me how to make a good movie? <laughs> can you help me choose my next role, please? Uh, I mean, it sounds like he's doing Uncharted 2 so, or Spider-Man 4. Is that what you told him to do? No, it's what it, it looks like in the trades. He asked you what he should do next, and you said... A no, simple? I didn't say anything. I just, I'm just assuming based Why off didn't of the you news. give him advice because I told him it's not like you're going to work with James Gray again. <laughs> no, I didn't he's, say that. He's me. dating Zendaya. He's doing okay. She's working with better directors than he is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, best movie made for television. Uh, the came Union court martial was nominated against uh, finest kind. Which is the, the, you do not know what Finest Kind is? Mm -mm. It is the uh, fisherman fishing boat film or whatever with Ben Foster, Toby Wallace, Jenna Ortega, and Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, the one where Tommy Lee Jones was like, did we have a scene together? Yeah. And uh, Um, it's on Paramount Plus. I bet Ben Uh, Foster was very chill on that set. He seems pretty chill everywhere else. Uh, Notoriously bad. Uh, notoriously sense. chill guy yeah um sarcasm folks uh mr monk's uh last case a monk movie oh honestly. he's back a better than ever streaming on peacock um no one will save you which is a hulu film is that the alien one yes never saw that actually heard good i heard good things. i've heard good things too i yeah. almost started it one time but i, I did yeah apologies reality which is the Sydney I Sweeney? Saw that. How is that? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. All right. They're not all winning. They don't have to all be winners. And the winner of this was Quiz Lady. On oh, Hulu. I hated that. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's one I did see. I hated that movie. <laughs> I think I, I was like, I think I, he's seen this movie. It does it does look really bad? Is it is it really really bad? It's pretty. It's pretty bad. It, I, like I understand what or... it was going for, but it it fails. Uh, so you, obviously, you give this to K Muni. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, look, maybe Monk can knock it. I off. was gonna say. I was thinking about leaning Monk. Monk is back and better than ever. But yeah. <laughs> let me see. What did I say about Quiz Lady? I'm about to read my Letterboxd review live on air. Oh no. Uh, has, a, has a moment or two isn't very funny looks like certified trash <laughs> two stars two stars i was gonna say two stars that sounds like a two-star yeah. review so okay buddy well we're not gonna go too much more into the awards conversation because there's really not that much more you can do but we got to do our own kind of awards here mm-hmm. and uh, we're gonna do our freaking rakings oh boy and so, Jay, I think it's only fair that you go first because sure, because you've got the longer list. I've got all of them. You've got, got all, all of them. 20 Friedkin movies. I got 12. I did not put... Um, I guess I should have put uh, 12 Angry Men, I guess, on this list. Did you put that on your list? I put it on my list, yes. Okay, then I will, I will do that while you are, are talking. So okay. if you could... Let's do 25 to 1 to get the listeners excited. So, All right. All right. It's only 20. So we'll go 20 to 1. I it's only 20? Earlier, but it's only 20. I thought it was 25. I said 25 earlier, but that was... So that you're just looking at the list. lying to me. I'm inflating and, my numbers, yes. And the rest of the audience. Great, Jay. We're supposed to build trust with our listeners, and you're just not doing any of that. Anyway. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Number 20 is his film with Chevy Chase, Deal of the Century. Uh, pretty abominable. Number 19, The Night They Raided Minsky's, which I think I'm the first person who watched that movie in 20 years. Uh, number 18 is his Sonny and Cher movie, Good Times. Number 17 is Jade. Number 16 is The Brinks Job. Number 15 is Rules of Engagement. Number 14, the lowest ranked movie that we actually covered on the podcast is Blue Chips. Mm. Number 13 is Rampage, an underrated kind of uh, serial killer movie. Mm-hmm. Number 12 is The Guardian, probably the schlockiest movie he ever made, and that's to its credit. Number 11 is The Boys in the Band. Number 10, I have Cruising. Number 9, uh, I have The Birthday Party, which is a movie that I'm sure not very many people have seen, but one, one of his better stage adaptations. Number eight, I have Killer Joe. Number seven, Bug. Number mm. six, The Kane Mutiny Court Martial. Number five, 12 Angry Men. Number four, The Exorcist. I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but I have The Exorcist at four. French Connection at three. To Live and Die in LA at two. And Sorcerer at number one. Where was, the, hunt- where was the Hunted again? Oh God, I don't. I didn't put the hunted on my list. Yeah, I was. I was uh, looking where the hunted's at. Uh, I'm gonna put the hunted. Honestly, I'm gonna put the hunted at five. Okay, so read the top five again, then. So the top five are the hunted, the exorcist, the French Connection, to live and die in L.A. and sorcerer. All right. Okay. And then everything else just moves down a spot. Yeah. Everything else moves down a spot. Great work by me. Yeah. I was like, where is the hunted? All right, <sighs> Jay. I only I got thirteen here, right? Okay. So my number thirteen is rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just come on. What are you doing, freaking iffy iffy film? Iffy that, that I, I I will say one of the craziest final shots I've ever seen in the it's, movie. It's period. it's it's truly it's, yeah yeah it's bonkers. Um, lowest movie that we've covered on the podcast uh, that we gave a review to. Uh, at number 12, Blue Chips. It's the correct spot. Number 11, The Boys in the Band. Mm-hmm. Number 10, 12 Angry Men. Number 9, Bug. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number 8, Killer Joe. Number 7, Cruising. Number 6, The K-Mutiny Court Martial. Number 5, The Hunted. Number 4, The French Connection. Mm-hmm. Number three, to live and die in LA. Mm-hmm. 
Number two, a sorcerer. And number one is the exorcist. Yep. Did yeah. you kind of expect that? Uh, Kind of. I, I wasn't sure if you would have to live and die in LA above the French connection, but those are those are kind of the four, right? Like it, those are the you, five. Kinda, you, those are the kinda, five. But do you have what was your five? The hunted? Yeah. No, but those are the four though. Those are the four that he will be remembered for. It's kind of like those yes. have to be your top four Friedkins. They of. they are they are the four that yes he will be remembered for. But I will tell you this: the experience of watching the hunted was it's the a good one. highlight of this entire series for me because i did not know how much that movie rips and boy does it rip with knives and all and i will probably rewatch that movie before the end of the year again it's a lean mean what like hour 32 or something i would love a 4k of that bad boy i'm just gonna put that out it's uh so what's your so what's your overall impression of friedkin um damn good at his job um i mean obviously a, a, a giant fucking character but he's not he's not going to be one of that he's not you know you're never going to name william Friedkin when somebody asks about your favorite directors right no but i will say that this experience is fascinating because like we I mean, obviously, he goes into sort of like journeyman areas and different things in that. There's a there's an ounce of wasted talent to him that isn't his fault. I mean, some of it is his fault because of his. Some mouth. of it is his fault, um, yeah. and some of it is some of his movies that has. Miss. The, the, let me just say, wasted talent that has nothing to do with again his talent. Right? No, it doesn't. And I think based his off potential. of if I could if I could be so bold and to say that i i do believe that he is a director that for the most part has like his contemporaries a giant pulse all the way until the end on on everything in terms of having the pulse of 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 having a point of view that is very interesting and unlike mm-hmm. many journeyman directors that could fall into different like a bunch of his movies and i did not see the the schlock uh that you got the other seven films or eight films that you had to watch um so and i know that you, there's a couple before he really becomes i appreciate that you said had to which is like a it's for for my mental health yes, I had to. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you buddy that's all um trying to make trying to make those uh the, those hours count to something thank you um you're welcome i think that based off of just the sample size which i think is normally from my experience the sample size that a lot of people would go on right which is our series because that's why the films that we picked right um i think that you can get a sense of this man like i said earlier he is very interested in the structures of our modern society and how humans react in those morally gray areas and a lot of these are are crime related um genre specific things but i think they speak a lot to uh the different times and different eras and different sensibilities and and they provoke a lot of discussion i mean he is honestly a very very thought provoking and um and and even a, a provocative director at times is and and there's a lot of his movies here that you're watching it's like these are these while maybe they don't all work like a hundred percent to give five star movies to they have probably more interesting things than a lot of other directors do from his eras and and yeah he's, he's always got something interesting behind the curtain here and most for, for these films that we talked about and so i think that and here's the thing most of the directors that we love, like Jay, we love Robert Altman. But there are, there's a batch of really just what the fuck are we doing here kind of movies. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't, there's no real such thing as this, of a perfect filmography. I think that the idea of like 
what Tarantino's trying to do with like have the perfect ten. It's like you still made Death Proof, asshole. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? So no, I, I like people know, not being precious about their no, but in catalog. Ter- but in in terms of just the overall ride that we took on this series, Jay, I I don't know. I had a great goddamn time doing it, and I miss I'm I kind of miss them already because I know that this is this is the literal close the book end on the series it is it's um you know it's odd again this was our longest series yet Mm -hmm. i would say i don't know i was about to be mean (laughs) well say what you say what you speak from the heart buddy well i because i'm not positive i agree with what i was about to say i was gonna say least fulfilling series we've done Oh no! I think that, I think that that's the Villeneuve series. I I think I agree with you. Yeah, that's why I I had pause. Yeah, especially after watching Dune Part Two. Ouch! Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it that'll, um yeah, that'll hurt in the future. It was yeah. I guess the interesting thing was Villeneuve went down in my estimation as we were doing that series, and Friedkin. The highs of Friedkin, his 70s run is pretty freaking undeniable. Yeah. But you're you're saying that most of the directors that we've done, they've got another run in them that's pretty equal to that. Or yeah, I close mean, to it. I don't and even know. Who who have we done? On on are you talking this show or are you talking just this overall? Show, this, okay. this show. This show. Well, we've done Todd Haynes. And Haynes, we've done Villeneuve, Denis Villeneuve. Freaking. We've done Lynn Ramsey and we've done Paul Thomas. Lynn Anderson. Ramsey. Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, that's tough. There was a lot of discovery in Lynn Ramsey, which I found satisfying. I think the thing is, if if you mind me filling in maybe a blank for you, buddy, mm-hmm. if you don't mind, is, is what you were saying earlier, is that there is a sense of 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 disappointment that there wasn't that he wasn't given the opportunity to go maybe back to that level again. Also, it's probably harder for me who watched all of them. And it's it's, like, it's a little bit you harder for you. The deal of the century. No, you didn't I'm see. There's sometimes when we do these series like this, it's it. Yeah. Jay will be a little bit downer than I am, but I mean, if you just take the movies that we talked about on the show, Jay, it is a, it, and, and which is, I mean, most directors are like this. You're going to take the batch that yeah. is good, and you're going to kind of forget because you're not going to go back. You, Jay Ledbetter, are not going to go back to that Chevy Chase movie or the Sonny and Cher movie. No, no, but God you're knows gonna, I'll go back to Sorcerer and The Exorcist and, and To Live and the, Die in L.A. To Live and Die in L.A., that was the first watch of this series where I was like, this is in the freaking rotation now. Yeah. This I is. Mean, you'd watch The Hunted? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, man, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that was another and, first time watch. Yeah. It was a worthwhile series. You know what? You're turning me around. I had a blast. I know. I, you're you're I had a getting blast. a little Debbie Downer there at the end. It's I like, had a come blast. on, buddy. And it's, it was a good it was a good suggestion. This was a was this a dual suggestion that we had here? Yeah, I think this was just a he just died, let's honor him thing. I know? think we did that. Yeah. And I I missed the guy. And god damn it, he was a fun He's son great. Of a Ryan, you gotta I- watch that Nicholas Winding ref and uh william Friedkin interview in i will obviously we know the famous clip where Refin says drive is a masterpiece and william Friedkin is like it is not we don't know what drive will be it's not a long time and then he just goes on a nice little rant what doesn't he say what is this what is the line that he says he says drive we don't know what drive is yet drive is not a because he's like we know what 2001 is. It's been out for 60 years or whatever. And he's yeah. like, drive is not a pimple on the asshole of humanity. <laughs> that is the line. I will always remember that. Line. You got to also say to this about this series, the, the, uh, the books and the, uh, the, the research that you had. Oh, to do. the memoir was fantastic. Highly Thoroughly entertaining stuff for you. The Friedkin connection. See? See what I mean? And I watched the Friedkin uncut documentary, which honestly was, it's probably awesome if you haven't read the memoir. Not yeah. a ton to offer for me having just read it, but uh, still, he's he's a pretty electric 
It's a thrill. Personality. He made a terrible documentary about an exorcist called The Devil and Father of Morth, but uh, in like 2017, which is kind of the central structural piece of that freaking uncut documentary. Mm. Uh, but it's, it's a very bad documentary. Yeah. But you know what I always tell you that when you do this shit? You don't have to watch all of it. And yes, I do. do. Yes. Ryan, I have to. <laughs> no one's holding holding your family hostage if you don't watch this terrible William Freakin documentary, Jay. Every time I tell my wife I'm doing a movie series, she says, if you don't watch all of them, I will divorce you. <laughs> I don't think she does that. She did that. She does that every time. I, I'm going to need like audio proof here soon if you she will never do that she will never admit to it but i'm just telling you behind closed doors that's what's driving me to do this stuff all right right, buddy well i mean we all make our choices in this world i guess you know um (laughs) but no it's been a great series i loved it i loved um i love these i love these discoveries too some of these were discoveries for me and and yeah i mean I need a sorcerer 4K like right now. That would be great. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah. That movie is really, really a masterpiece in my opinion. Yeah. So, well, Jay, tell everybody where they can find you and all your work on the internet, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lead with Letterboxd. Jay Ledbetter on Letterboxd. At Mister Jay Ledbetter on Twitter um uh what else you can find any writing or podcasting i'm doing outside of this on awards watch and ryan Mm. there was one thing i told you i was gonna do before the series was over oh son of a bitch remember what it was no i don't i don't remember what it was buddy i watched network oh my god i did it holy shit all right well before i get into my thoughts uh and where you can find me jay what do you think of this movie I like it. <laughs> That's it? You only like it? I. It is not up there with 12 Angry Men or uh, Dog Day Afternoon for Lumet for me. Uh, it's a, it, it gets a little bit into quit yelling at me about, <laughs> about stuff I'm already aware of. Yeah. And it is, it, it, I, I will say the, the funniest thing to me about it is just ref, like thinking about the stuff that we're still yeah. complaining about and making movies about today i'm just like oh so people have just been saying this forever mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's, it's just but kind of, i do, i will say there's just a way in which patty chayefsky and and lament make that movie that like puts every sh- satire that's tried to or commentary movie that's come out no i i, I agree like, with you i mean i thought of nightcrawler which is like <laughs> doesn't hold a candle to uh yeah. to, to network you know or just like um, how adam mckay has been trying to make this movie the last couple of years and it's just like you're never going to make it dude like just cut your shit yeah Yeah, i mean it's it's uh it's a very good movie i it's not gonna i will tell you you know all-time favorites or whatever and also how the hell who is the supporting actress that won the oscar oh god um yeah who is that again shit uh yeah because she's like barely in it right she has one scene And I don't even think it's a terribly effective scene. Beatrice Strait. <laughs> there you go, Beatrice Strait. Yeah, yeah. Don't get that one. That mm-hmm. is truly blew my mind. Yeah, I know. But it hap- it I mean, there's sometimes. a lot of fantastic performances in in the film. I mean, it is Duvall. Duvall. William Holden has always Holden. kind of been one of my favorites. Yeah, uh, Faye, Faye Dunaway is, is really good. Incredible. And she's actually kind of the lead of the movie yeah she is yeah yeah um well i can i can tell you this is that the first time i watched it it it, i kind of felt that way too jay Mm -hmm. and then the the second watch fucking blew the house blew the house down for me and i when and when and i was really watching it again when i went on a little met run Mm -hmm. and man it was like man this is just like fucking great so I think I think you'll. It's one. Yeah, I think maybe you, I'll come to appreciate revisit. it more. For sure. Yeah, I think you'll revisit it. It's it's definitely worth I liked the revisit it. too. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I, I just wasn't like. What'd it you give it? Make four stars. I give it a four. I give yeah. it a four. I haven't That's logged it yet because I didn't want you to see. Oh, see, yeah. Because I'm a man sneaky. of my word. Sneaky, sneaky. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing is, is I, I, I'm assuming you look at my letterbox and I look at your letterbox all the time, mm-hmm. probably. Absolutely. Um, just because we're, we're always just like, what did the other one rate it? And mm-hmm. usually nine times out of 10, we're pretty goddamn close to one another now. Yep. Um, well, you can find all my work uh, at awardswatch.com. You can find me on Letterbox, Instagram, Twitter, at Ryan McQuaid 77 uh, Five-star reviews up on iTunes and Spotify. That would be great. While you're over at the website, uh, sign up for the newsletter. It's where you can get all of our podcasts as well as reviews, interviews, all that stuff in one place sent to you. Uh, the Awards Watch Show. It releases every Monday. If you like podcasts, um, you should like podcasts because you listen to this every Thursday. Uh, movie that movie that I've seen uh, recently. Oh, that's tough. Um, well, I guess what I can tell everybody out here, Jay, is I won't give a recommendation because I haven't rewatched it in a while, but I'll give them something in preparation. How about that, Jay? All right. Because next week, we start a new movie series. Yeah, we do. So it's only right to tell you guys exactly what that... Very different filmmaker. Very different, more modern, but one of our favorites, or one of many people's favorites, and she had a movie come out last year too, and we are going to be covering the films of Sofia Coppola. Over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And we will have the Virgin Suicides next week. So if you haven't seen the Virgin Suicides, I would recommend you watch that because that's going to be our first episode of a new series starting next. But here's week. the twist. Hmm. Only male guests. No, Jay. See what you're talking about with your bit. It's it, oh. that's that's not what we actually have. In, we have a lot of female guests that will be on the show, but uh next week will actually just be a solo episode with uh, jay and myself it'll just be us introducing yeah. y'all into the well, series and then, we'll, and then uh and then we'll have all of our guests come on um our guests are piling up we've got a lot of guests over the next two series yeah um, we got, uh, we got a lot of cool folks coming on yeah it's going to be uh some great time especially with content over the summer and everything and uh, we have a, a very special uh, movie series following sofia coppola um not that sofia coppola's movie series isn't special we're really looking forward to doing that one but then also the one after it it's kind of the perfect film series to do for summer that's the only hit you guys are going to get right now Just think of summer movies maybe and what those kind of wow. mean but right now for the next couple of weeks we will be watching the films and talking about the films of sofia coppola so we will be back next week with the virgin suicides so thank you all so much for listening And we will see you all next time.